According to some anthropologists, Neanderthals and Homo sapiens may have descended from a hominid that lived in Europe more than a million years ago. A black flint hand axe that was discovered by a man strolling along the beach in England dates back between 600,000 and 800,000 years. 80 Paleolithic flint tools, mostly cores, flakes, and flake tools, were discovered in sediment that could have been present up to 950,000 years ago. The tools are the oldest artifacts discovered in Northern Europe and are thought to have been created by Homo antecessor, the same species thought to have also left footprints. About 500,000 years ago, humans and Neanderthals split from a single ancestor. While many anthropologists will claim that we don't truly understand who our common ancestor was, others will assert that we do. It was a member of the species Homo heidelbergensis or a closely related one. Others, however, will suggest a different possibility, a contentious species known as Homo antecessor. An extinct human species known as Homo antecessor, which lived between 1.2 million and 800,000 years ago, was found in northern Spain Sierra de Atapuerca. One of the earliest types of humans in Europe is known as Homo antecessor. The remains of Homo antecessor, which were discovered for the first time in the 1990s, have only been found in one cave in the Atapuerca Mountains of northern Spain. A group of Spanish researchers discovered 80 fossils at the Grand Alina site that belonged to six hominids who lived about 800,000 years ago. The hominids' teeth were primitive, similar to those of Homo erectus, but some aspects of their faces were modern, resembling characteristics of modern people, especially the way their noses were shaped and whether or not they had a depression in their face called the canine fossa above their canine teeth. The researchers named the fossils Homo antecessor because of the unusual combination of contemporary and archaic characteristics. A partial lower jaw and several dozen stone tools from around 1.2 million years ago were found at Sima del Elephant, a different cave site in Atapuerca. The only other potential site for Homo antecessor fossils outside of Spain is a collection of stone tools discovered at Hapispera, an English archaeological site that dates back nearly 800,000 years and may have been made by the species. According to the species discoverers, Homo antecessor is the most credible candidate for being the common ancestor of Neanderthals and Homo sapiens because of its age, and similarities to modern humans. They hypothesize that Homo erectus, may have evolved from a group that lived in Africa more than 1.5 million years ago before migrating to Europe. Most likely, this is a population of Homo erectus georgicus from the Caucasus Mountains. Although Homo antecessor hasn't been found in Africa, some fans of the movie Out of Africa believe that if it were the ancestor of modern humans, which some fossil evidence suggests originated in Africa, then Homo antecessor had to come from Africa. Homo heidelbergensis is also too similar to Neanderthals, according to the researchers, to be a direct ancestor of modern humans. Instead, in this complicated scenario, Homo antecessor gave rise to Homo heidelbergensis, which then gave rise to Neanderthals. But this scenario does not hold much support among anthropologists. According to Gibbons, one issue is that the majority of the known Homo antecedent specimens are of juvenile age. Six people were discovered at Grand Alina, only two of whom are believed to be adults and are around 20 years old. It's possible that adult Homo antecessors didn't resemble Homo sapiens at all because the majority of the traits linking Homo antecessor to modern people were discovered in juveniles whose bodies and physical characteristics change as they mature and experience puberty. And if that's the case, it would be difficult to claim that the species and us are related in any way. The debate won't be resolved until experts come across good examples of adult Homo antecessor fossils that are in their entirety. The name of this species is hotly contested, with many believing the remains to be those of Homo heidelbergensis. These fossils are the oldest Homo discovered in Western Europe, regardless of the species they may represent. These are the earliest human remains discovered in Western and Central Europe. This species lived in Europe between 800,000 and 1.2 million years ago. How Homo antecessor relates to other Homo species in Europe and where it fits on the evolutionary tree are still up for debate. According to one theory, Homo ergaster and Homo heidelbergensis shared a common ancestor. According to a different hypothesis, Homo heidelbergensis gave rise to a distinct species known as Homo antecessor. Finally, that Homo antecessor is the same species as Homo heidelbergensis, which lived in Europe during the Pleistocene from 600,000 to 250,000 years ago.
The upper jaw fossil, which belonged to a child and dates to roughly 800,000 years ago, was found in Spain. Other Homo antecessor fossil bones found in Spain exhibit cuts that could indicate cannibalism. The male Homo antecessor would have been 90 kilograms in weight and between 1.6 and 1.8 meters tall. Their brains were smaller than the 1,350 cubic centimeters average of modern humans, measuring between 1,000 and 1,150 cubic centimeters. It would have had a small lower jaw and chin as well as a low forehead. It would have shared many characteristics with Turkana boy and Homo ergaster. There is proof that there is primitive speech. The earliest known population of the genus Homo in northern Europe lived in England approximately 950,000 years ago, according to fossil and tool discoveries made there. Stone tools older than a million years have been discovered during excavations in Spain. The tools could have been made by Homo ergaster and Homo antecessor, according to archaeologists. In fact, the earliest humans used the tools to inhabit and settle in the Iberian Peninsula. The hewn quartzite tools that were discovered were used as choppers to cut wood and meat. With the creation of stone tools, our ancestors started to improve their biological capabilities, marking the beginning of technological innovation in human history. This points to a critical turning point in the development of our ancestors. It is believed that the production and use of tools is closely related to, if not the catalyst for, significant changes in cognitive development, geographic scope, and morphological characteristics like body and brain size. Even though the precise nature of these relationships is still debated, a better comprehension of these problems will advance our understanding of everything from the timing of our genus's first use of fire, or hunting to the evolution of human cognitive sophistication. The species name antecessor is a Latin word that means explorer, pioneer, or early settler, whereas the genus name Homo is the Latin word for human. This name was given because it was thought that these individuals belonged to the earliest known human population from the European continent, making them the antecedent of these populations. Remains of over 80 fossils, including skeletal and cranial remains and representing at least six individuals, were discovered. These remains have a minimum age of 780,000 years. The discovery team thought they had discovered a new species because of the peculiar combination of characteristics. What's more, 1.2 million-year-old remains were discovered by researchers at Sima del Elephant, also in Atapuerca. An isolated molar and a jawbone with a few front teeth were among the human fossils. The molar was described as being well-worn and belonged to a person between the ages of 20 and 25. Stone flakes and animal bones from butchered animals were also found. However, this species designation is debatable. The majority of researchers believe that these belong to an early and erratic population of Homo heidelbergensis. Consider Homo antecessor to be the final common ancestor of Neanderthals and Homo sapiens because, according to its discoverers, it exhibits more characteristics in common with modern humans than European Homo heidelbergensis. Homo antecessor may have descended from Homo ergaster, according to some dental and cranial characteristics. This hypothesis for the evolutionary and temporal relationships between Homo erectus and other species is provided by the discoveries. In Africa, Homo ergaster was the ancestor of Homo antecessor. Homo antecessor migrated from the Middle East to Europe, including Grand Alina, about a million years ago. The Neanderthals' ancestors, Homo heidelbergensis, evolved from Homo antecessor in Europe. In Africa, Homo antecessor, possibly represented by fossils like the Bodo and Carbway skulls, evolved into Homo sapiens through a different species. In this scenario, Homo heidelbergensis, which is the European descendant of Homo antecessor, is not on the evolutionary path that led to modern humans. It would be necessary to rename African Homo heidelbergensis to Homo rhodesiensis, the name originally given to the Carbway skull. Instead of any single feature that sets this species apart from others, it is a particular combination of features in the cranium, teeth, and lower jaw that make it distinctive from other hominid fossils. Archaic and modern characteristics are blended in the features. The cranium of a 10-year-old juvenile, discovered at Grand Alina, serves as the type specimen for this species. Having a juvenile as a type specimen, according to some experts, is problematic because some of the features might be juvenile traits that are lost in the species adults. 
However, a comparison to young individuals of other species reveals that these characteristics are specific to these remains. The skull has modern features like a mid-face that looks modern, a canine fossa with a hollowed cheekbone, and a projecting nose. It also has archaic features like a low forehead and a double brow ridge that is distinct, resembling those of Chinese Homo erectus and Neanderthals, and an occipital bun that protrudes from the back of the skull. Derived features include canines and some of the anterior teeth that are reduced in size. Tooth eruption patterns appear to be similar to modern humans, suggesting the same developmental rates, receding chin, mandible is thinner than that of Homo ergaster and Homo habilis, and post-canine teeth are smaller than in Homo habilis. Teeth and jaws include robust teeth, premolars with multiple roots, and shovel-shaped incisors in. In a study about the teeth of Homo antecessor that was published in the Journal of Human Evolution, 14 previously unpublished teeth were examined. Although the hominin teeth found at the Grand Alina site were compared in this journal, the collection grew significantly over the past 10 years, necessitating an updated analysis. The study includes a thorough comparison of the enamel and dentine of the teeth using both conventional techniques and micro-CT. In addition to some derived features that are shared with later populations like Sima de los Husos hominins and Neanderthals, the new study reveals a significant number of primitive features that are shared with the earliest members of the genus Homo. The study also highlights the distinctions between Homo antecessor and Asian Homo erectus teeth, which supports Homo antecessor's taxonomic validity. At the time, it was suggested that the species, which is thought to be 860,000 years old, is the most likely candidate to represent the final common ancestor of modern humans and Neanderthals. The latest research supports the earlier theory and contends that Homo antecessor belonged to the population that gave rise to Homo sapiens, Neanderthals, and Denisovans. At least 300 animal bones and 200 stone tools, both dated to at least 780,000 years ago, were also found during excavations at Grand Alina. Similar discoveries were made at Sima del Elephant, where about 32 pieces of stone tools and various mixed animal remains dating to between 1.1 and 1.2 million years ago were discovered. Both sites had simple Mode 1 technology or older and style stone tools that were crafted from regional raw materials. Lacking the more advanced tools found elsewhere at this time, the tools available were simple cutting flakes. The cave at Sima del Elephant appeared to be a tool napping site, with flakes clearly demonstrating the manufacturing processes used to separate the artifacts from handheld medium-sized cores, using direct hammer percussion. The nature of the tool kit and the lack of retouched tools at this location imply that the primary purposes of the tools were the preparation and consumption of meat and marrow. The animal remains at both sites have cut marks on them. The marks are in keeping with processing carried out by humans to obtain meat and marrow. The majority of the human remains found at Grand Alina, which is interesting, also show the same kinds of cut marks, suggesting that dismemberment was probably the intended result. The idea that the incisions or marks were made by humans is supported by the absence of tooth marks left by carnivores. It is questionable whether this was the result of cannibalism because there have been instances of bones being devoured without the flesh. However, the majority of these cases involve funerary rites, which are not present in this species, or any human species for at least another 700,000 years. These people don't seem to have maintained a permanent residence in either of the caves. Instead, they only went there for specific events or times of the year. They most likely moved around in search of food. The Sima del Elephant site small animal remains indicate a generally warm and humid climate with warmer cooler shifts existed at the time. The Walian, a warm stage with warmer cooler shifts that occurred between 1.5 and 1.3 million years ago, correlates with this. Similar circumstances have been cited for the area around 800,000 years ago. The weather was warm, wet, and largely stable at this time. This all changed when the climate turned comparatively harsh and cold, between 600,000 and 500,000 years ago. Soon after this, European humans begin to exhibit Neanderthal-like traits, many of which seem to be adaptations to extremely cold environments. There seems to have been a lot of meat in the diet. Numerous large mammals that have been butchered and some of the larger bones that have been broken to obtain the marrow are the subject of the majority of the remains at both sites. Young horses and deer are particularly prevalent at Grand Alina. 
Whether the animals were hunted or scavenged for food is not clear from the remains, but both techniques were probably used. They most likely added plants to their diet as well. Over 800,000 years ago, during the early Pleistocene, a group of hominid footprints known as the Hapisbura footprints were discovered. In a space of nearly 40 square meters, there were about 50 footprints discovered. Twelve were mostly complete, and two had toe details. Five people, including adults and children, have been identified from their footprints. The footprint sizes were thought to be equivalent to individuals 0.9 to 1.7 meters in height. The people who created them are thought to have been members of the Homo antecedent species, which is thought to have existed in the Atapuerca Mountains of Spain around 800,000 years ago. At Hapisbura, no fossils of hominins have been discovered. According to analysis, the group of possibly five people was moving southward, upstream, along mudflats in the estuary of the River Thames at a time when it flowed farther north into the sea than it did when Southeast Britain was connected to the European continent. Archaeologists have hypothesized that the group was looking for sea life like lugworms, shellfish, crabs, and seaweed on the mudflats. The group might have been traveling from their island base to the shore at low tide. They might have lived on an island in the estuary that offered protection from predators.